Hello, my name is Dr. Jason Lee, clinical immunologist and allergist practicing in Toronto, Ontario. Thank you for bearing with me through lectures one and two. I know that was a lot of material. In those lectures, we learned that an allergy is a type one hypersensitivity reaction. We also learned that allergies involve primarily something called the mast cell. These mast cells are coated by something called IgE specific antibodies. These are bound to the mast cell through something called FC epsilon R1. You can think these two things in conjunction as one functional unit that acts as an on switch. There are many other on switches to the mast cell, but for allergies, this is the main on switch. Our body, as mentioned, does a pretty good job of distinguishing harmful from not harmful stuff. If we reacted to everything that was foreign to us, then our reactions would probably disable us and cripple us. So, a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction occurs in that rare instance that our body misidentifies something that's potentially harmful. So, mast cells. Where are they? Well, I like to think of these guys as border patrol or homeland security in the U.S. They're found at the linings of our body and the outside world. So, this includes places like the lung, the heart, the gut, the blood vessels, skin, nose, eyes. They are found in other areas too, but think anywhere where there's a potential border. When your body gets exposed to something, and let's say grass pollen, which is airborne, it will hit one of the borders of our body. Your body has a way of figuring this out. So let's figure out what the players are. This is really the bridge between innate and adaptive immunity that we talked about. When your body gets exposed to something for the first time that it has never seen before, unless it's something that looks kind of harmful like a bacteria, virus, or parasite, your body doesn't know what it is. It needs to distinguish between self and non-self as discussed. So, something gets introduced, we call this an antigen. The antigen gets taken up by something called the antigen presenting cell. The APC for short, you can think of this as a football player that relies on the quarterback to tell it what to do. It takes a look at the antigen and then presents it to the T cell. The T cell you can think of as the quarterback of the football team. The T cell determines what play to run and how the immune system is going to react. If a T cell thinks that the antigen is something harmful to us, then it will cascade and do a number of other actions and influence other cells around it. It really is like the quarterback setting a play in motion. One of the things it will do is go to the B cell and cause the B cell to become a factory of antibody producing cell. We call this the plasma cell. The plasma cell creates these antibodies that get released into the circulation, eventually making their way into the mast cells and attaching themselves to the FC epsilon R1 receptor. Now, if the antigen happened to be a grass pollen, the antibodies are now attached to the mast cells. So the next time the mast cell sees a grass pollen, it will react right away and cause symptoms. This results in allergic conjunctivitis of the eyes, allergic rhinitis of the nose, and allergic asthma of the lungs. Occasionally, if a food happens to be related to the pollen, such as grass, you can have reactions that resemble anaphylaxis. This is very rare though. The vast majority of reactions to foods that are related kind of look like grass pollen are oral allergy syndrome or otherwise known as food pollen allergy syndrome which causes itchiness in the mouth. Other cells can also be involved but basophils, eosinophils are one of the other players in this allergic reaction. They also happen to have the FC epsilon R1 receptor. Now I want to say that if you're not sure about the symptoms that you're experiencing, um, please see a uh, medical specialist. 
preferably in clinical immunology and allergy who has experience distinguishing what is potentially anaphylaxis from a benign reaction. Just a quick recap, an antigen presenting cell presents something like a pollen to a T cell. The T cell shouldn't really react as if it were a parasite, but if it does, it causes a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, causing the B cell to become a factory of antibody producing cells. These antibodies, if they happen to be IgE, will coat the mast cell basophil eosinophil, but the bulk of the reactions are because of the mast cells. This results in a both an immediate and late phase reaction, which causes the symptoms of allergies. In the next lecture, we'll be talking more about grass allergies in particular, and we'll be talking about treatments in the last lecture.